We all want more freedom, and a lot of us work hard now in the hope we'll feel free later. What if there was another way? A way to feel happier, more free, and confident to get better results right now. Welcome to Your Freedom Unlimited, where we share practical stories and strategies to help you show up authentically, drop your fears, and take inspired action on what matters most to you. I'm your host, Jen Ramsey. As a coach with a love for metaphysics, science, spirituality, and strategies that get results, I'll help you step away from self-doubt and create a powerful new story for your life, business, or career. Join me. How much fun do you have every day? Do you play every day? Or have you forgotten how to have fun? And would you play more if you knew it would boost your mood, your creativity, reduce your stress and improve your relationships? Hi everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Your Freedom Unlimited. My name is Jen Ramsey and I am so glad that you're here with me today. Because today we're going to be speaking about one of our final master frequencies for creating more freedom, happiness and confidence in your life. This one is probably not what you might have expected because this master frequency is all about fun and play. But before I get into that, what is a master frequency? Well, a master frequency is a term I've created to describe some very specific, very high vibration feelings or emotions that we can intentionally tap into at any time to raise our vibration, our energy and our mood. These master frequencies are the precursors, in fact, to all other great feelings. So why is this important and why would we want to do this? Because the higher our vibration, the greater energy and love we feel and that we get to access in our life, then we get to enjoy that for ourselves and to share with others. So when we intentionally tap into these master frequencies, we can go to the whole next level in our lives. And let me tell you, when you do this, everything changes. In the last few episodes, I've shared about the master frequencies that are ideal for us to hold as consistently as possible every single day in our lives. So in episode 19, we looked at gratitude, acceptance and allowing in episode 21, trust in episode 23 and self-worth in episode 25. And in episode 27, I covered love. So there's lots here for you to dig into and I really encourage you to go back and listen to those episodes because there's so much goodness here for us if we understand the value of these master frequencies. So today though is all about the master frequency of play and fun. So why is this a master frequency? Well, when we're in that real energy of play and fun, we immediately go to a place of joy and so our vibe becomes much higher. And as I said earlier, when our vibe is high, great things can happen. We get to access our creativity and our inspiration and we tend to feel much more connected to ourselves and to others. And this is really where the magic is. If we really want to expand into who we truly are, if you are on search for your true purpose, then tapping into your creativity and these new ideas is absolutely vital. So let me share with you now some of the science behind play. While we all know play brings us fun and joy, there is a growing body of research that shows play is actually vital for problem solving, for creativity and relationships. American psychiatrist Stuart Brown actually says that plenty of play in childhood leads to happy, smart adults and keeping it up can make us smarter at any age. Now, Dr. Brown is someone who knows what he's talking about. He's spent decades studying people, studying play in people, and he's talked to people ranging from prisoners to business people, from artists to Nobel Prize winners. And he's reviewed over 8,000 play histories where he's looked at how play has uh, been used in people's childhood and in their adulthood. And he's actually written a book about this and his book is called Play. And in the book, he compares play to oxygen. He says something really fascinating. He says, play is all around us yet goes mostly unnoticed 
or unappreciated until it's missing. Dr. Brown is so passionate about this subject, he's founded the National Institute for Play, and he's also got a great TED Talk on play, so I'll put a link for that in the show notes for you. So that's some of the science, but if you're still feeling unsure about play, let me share with you now six great reasons why play is great and why it's so good for us. So the first one is, is that when we're playing, we stop taking ourselves so seriously and we be can become much more relaxed, authentic and real. We get back to who we really are. So I'm not sure about you, but I think for a long time, I had become way too serious as an adult. I look back now and I see how I just got myself so locked up into how I needed to be and how things needed to be around me. Um, I was, if you like, you know, that, that type A kind of personality. And what I realize now is that that seriousness, seriousness that I had about life, it was all about really managing, you know, my, my fears, my anxieties, and about keeping things in, in control. Because when things were under control, then I felt safe. But the side effect of all of this was that me feeling, you know, that I wanted to control and manage everything in my world, it kept me feeling very uptight and anxious. And today I can just see how stifling that whole situation was for me, but also for all of the people around me. So I, a couple of years ago, I turned over a leaf and now I have put purposely put much more fun into my life. And I have to say, now that I've done that, I am so much more relaxed and my life is much easier all around and a lot more fun. And I think what happens here is that when we start having some more fun and putting more play into our lives, we start to feel better inside ourselves. And we, when we feel better inside ourselves, then everything outside of ourselves starts feeling better as well. So I'd just like to ask you for a moment, just take yourself back to the last time you might've had a great laugh with someone. It felt great, right? Because that's, that's what, what's happening there is that you are in your body. And when you're, you're in your body rather than in your mind, we just tap into some really essential wisdom inside of ourselves. And it's so energizing and just so beautiful. So the second reason that play is so good for us is that play brings us right now here into the moment, away from our worries and fears. And I'm not sure about you, but I found when I'm playing, I immediately come into the present moment and I feel more connected to myself and to those around me. And as I've said before, being in the moment, this is where the magic is. This is where we get to really access our connection to our inner selves and to our source energy, that innate energy that I'm often talking about. And when we're in connection with our source energy, which really is love, this is where amazing things can happen. It's where great ideas and inspirations for living our life can, can come forth. The other thing that I've noticed is that when I'm in the moment, my worry and my anxiety reduces because I'm not thinking about things in the past or in the future. One of the things that I've found that really helps bring me into the moment is painting and drawing. It really brings me completely into the now and I just get so lost, lost in the beautiful color and movement of the, of the pen or the paintbrush on the page. And the really important thing here is my, with my painting and my drawing is that I've really made a very clear you know, agreement with myself that I don't put pressure on myself to paint perfectly. I'm not a great technical drawer. If you were to ask me to draw a scene in perfect perspective, I can't do it for you. But what I can do is that I, I can paint and draw for the love of it. And when I do that, beautiful things happen on the page and people do like my work simply because of, I guess, the freedom of expression in it. And one of the things that I've found that I really love to do when I'm painting and drawing is to actually physically get my hands into the paint and do finger painting on my canvas. It just feels so good. So I'll share uh, an image of one of my pictures in the blog and the show notes that go with this episode if you'd like to have a look at that. But the bottom line is here, I'm no Picasso, but I get a lot of joy out of doing it. And what I find is that it really brings me into the moment. So I'd love to encourage you to take up something similar for yourself. It might not be painting, but something else that you can just lose yourself in. It's, it's just so magical. 
And I guess that step there of being in the moment is linked to the third reason that play is so good for us, because play boosts our creativity. When we're in this frequency of play, we, we move into a completely different and very creative space and a space where opportunities and new ideas can really open up for us. And I guess I want to ask you a question now. Have you ever found that when you're in that fun place of play, does doing something that perhaps doesn't necessarily lead to anything or doesn't have any big outcome, do you sometimes find that some great ideas just pop into your head? If that's the case, you're absolutely in attunement with who you are and, and who we are as human beings because the neuroscience has found that when we're doing something that doesn't need a lot of effort or something that we're not you know focusing on getting an outcome from our brains are then free to wander and what's interesting here is that the research shows that when our brain is at rest it actually isn't really resting Research from the Radboud University in the Netherlands has found that our brain's default mode network becomes much more active when we're resting. And they've found that there is a link between this default mode network and our creativity. So I guess here in a nutshell, what I want to share with you is that the mind wandering or daydreaming that we might do while we're at rest or at play allows different ideas to bubble up from our subconscious and to come into our conscious awareness. The other interesting thing is that distractions can also boost our creativity. Harvard psychologist Dr. Shelley Carson has found in her research that in fact distractions can boost our creativity and improve our success. In some research she did, she found that high lifetime creative achievers were less likely to screen out their distractions and more likely to use them to their advantage. And a great case in point of this, I think, is Einstein. Apparently, if he got stuck with a problem, he would go and play his violin. And his sister said that sometimes after playing, he'd get up and say, there, now I've got it. So if it worked for Einstein, I think it could work for any one of us. The fourth reason that play is great for us is that play boosts our energy and helps us feel younger. And who doesn't want to feel younger? Why, is, why does this happen? Well, because when we're playing, we actually drop all of our resistance and our fear and our need for control. So what I've found is those negative energies just can't exist in the same space as play. So when we're not running those negative frequencies or energies in our systems, we've got so much more energy left over. And when we've got that leftover energy, it can actually pour back into whatever it is that we need to do in our lives. So I'm not sure about you, but just think about perhaps when you might have had a few moments of break or a bit of a play, you can feel much more refreshed and ready to go back to whatever it is that you need to do. It could be your work, it could be parenting, it could be study, whatever it is that you need to do. The good news here is that this refreshed energy helps us to become more productive and more creative when we go back to whatever it is that we need to do. And as for feeling young, well, I think when we're playing, we feel great, we feel more vital and alive, just as we did when we were kids. And I think George Bernard Shaw says it best here. He says, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I just love that quote. The fifth reason that play is great for us is that it improves our relationships. Why is that? Well, when we're playing and having fun, we're laughing and we're actually in that beautiful energy of love. And when we're in that space of love, we don't need anything from anyone else. We've got enough love inside of us. And of course, if we're in that energy of love, our relationships are only going to improve. So I often think of that old saying, those that play together, stay together. And it is so true. Just think of those people that you know in your life where they might have a shared hobby or something that they do. There's just, there's such an enjoyment and such a connection of doing something together. And this then brings me to our sixth reason that play is good for us. Because when we're playing, we can feel happier and more free. And I'd have to say, out of all of these six reasons that I've shared with you, for me, this last reason is most vital. Because when we're playing every day, we're feeling more happy and more free. And why is that so important? Because it means we're having fun today now and we're not putting our life on hold. We're not waiting for some far off time, you know, when that big work project is finished or the house is paid off or the kids have been educated or we've finished our own degree to finally have some fun. 
if we play every day now, we really get that fresh lease on life right now, rather than waiting for some far off time to have fun. And I know for me, this is certainly working for me. I know for a long time, I used to work, 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 thinking that once I'd got all of my work done or I'd hit a certain milestone, then I could have some downtime and have some fun, maybe go on a holiday or have a break. But to be frank, I found living life like that is quite a drag. It's not really living life the way we were intended to live it. So the opportunity here is for us is to choose intentionally to have fun and joy every day. Because then when we do that every day, we, we become lighter in ourselves and we're no longer waiting for that far off time to feel good or to have some fun. So that's just six benefits of play. And I'm sure there are many more, but the big question I have for you right now is, have I convinced you? Have I convinced you about the power of play yet? I really hope I have. So now I'd love to encourage you to build more fun and play into your day. How can we do this? Well, really it's about choosing something for ourselves to, that we can do every day purely for the joy of it, for no other reason. For me, this is doing some yoga, some journaling or some art. You know, as I said earlier, I love working with color and paints, but I also have fun playing with our dog, Lucy. She's always up for a game and taking her for a walk. And I love that because I'm out in nature. I get to, you know, spend some quiet time in the bush near where I live. And I also love seeing Lucy sniff about in the bush. She is just having so much joy connecting with what is out there for her. So that's, those are just some simple things that I do every day to bring that fun into my life. So for you, I'm just talking about carving out 10 to 15 minutes every day to do something for the joy of it. It could be drawing, singing, playing an instrument, could be writing, playing a sport, doing some sewing, anything that is fun for you. One of my clients has just discovered the joy of woodwork. So what we've done is we have built this into her weekly routine simply because she sees how much value she gets out of it across her business and her personal life. She understands that when she's doing, having fun doing her woodwork, the benefits of that flow throughout her life. And that's what I'd love to encourage you to do is to see how you could do something fun that could, could flow throughout your life. The one thing that I do want to say here, though, is that the research is very clear that connecting with technology is not play. So we need to leave screens and social media behind. Scrolling your feed is really not technically considered to be fun or play. So if you can take a moment and uh, have a little, maybe even have a little bit of a social media detox. Another couple of my clients have done that recently and they have just loved that they have found just shutting off from the social media for a period of time has really made all the difference to their overall happiness in their lives. So try that. That's another little thing you can do. And that time that you might have spent on social media, what could you do that could be fun? You know, what, what would be something that you could spend that time doing? You know, if you're spending 15 minutes or half an hour online, what else could you be doing with that time? I know one of my friends, she recently had a social media detox and then really decided to focus on learning more about decorating her home. That was one of her um, things that she was really interested to do. And she, so she was going to use the time that she normally would have been on social media to put into learning how to, de to decorate her home. So whatever works for you. Now, if you're still stumped for ideas, I'd love to encourage you to think back to the things you might have loved doing as a child. So when I was a child, I loved swimming, I loved bike riding, horse riding, and even running under the sprinkler on a hot summer's day. And I grew up on a farm, so I was able to do those things. And I, I also remember, I loved walking down the road after a really big thunderstorm and jumping in the puddles and getting completely muddy. I found that a lot of fun. I don't know if my mother loved that as much, but I know it was something that I just loved doing it. And it was even better if I had a friend over and we could go and do it together. So remembering back to when we were children and the things that we did can really take us back to times of great fun. And really what's to stop us from jumping in a puddle now? Nothing, unless we take ourselves too seriously. So just think back to when you were a kid and 
What did you love doing? And could you bring some of those fun things back in now? Last night, I watched that beautiful new Netflix documentary called My um, Octopus Teacher. And it's such a beautiful documentary. I really encourage you to watch it. And it was a beautiful journey of a man who went back to deep sea diving. It wasn't deep sea diving, went back to diving in the kelp forests near his home. It was, and it was something that he'd done as a child. And he got so much incredible richness from that. And you'll, if you watch that documentary, you'll see that. So there's so many things we can do. So just make a list of them and think about, you know, something that might work for you. And just to sort of hark back to childhood, on the weekend, I had a really beautiful and very unexpected experience. Friends invited us to go and visit a winery that had an alpaca farm attached. So as I said, I grew up on a farm and I absolutely love animals. So um, our friends asked us to go to this winery where they also have alpacas for people to literally hire and hang out with while they picnic at the winery. So we didn't hire an alpaca, but I did get the chance to get up close and personal with these gorgeous alpacas. And it was just so joyful to be in their presence. And it took me back to being a child and just connecting with an, an, in an, with an animal in a, in a moment. And just having that moment to touch their beautiful wool and look into their eyes was just so beautiful and so much fun for me. The other thing that I did on the weekend was to go to the beach and swim in the ocean. It's spring here in Australia at the moment, so the ocean was still pretty chilly. So to keep warm, I did what I used to do as a little girl. I jumped up and down in the waves and then I sort of dove headfirst into the waves just like I used to when I was a little girl. It was such simple fun, but it really energized me for the rest of the day. So as ever on your Freedom Unlimited, I want to hand this over to you. I'd love you to make your list and commit to having a little bit of fun and play every day in your life. Maybe try a few different things until you work out what really works for you. But you really will be amazed at what comes out of it. Just imagine for a moment if you could feel more authentic and lighthearted. Imagine if you felt more in the moment, if you felt more creative, and if you felt more energized. And what if you could feel happier and more free within yourself right now, not waiting for some time, far off time to have fun? So just write your list and make a commitment to yourself. I'd love you to share how you go with me in the comments. And if you can, if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate and review your Freedom Unlimited and share this episode with someone you feel would get something out of it. And I'd like to say thank you once again for sharing your time with me this week. Until we speak again, take great care and lots of love. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Your Freedom Unlimited. If you like this show, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate and review Your Freedom Unlimited on your favorite podcast player. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, you can reach me directly at jenramsey.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you.